Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this look that I have on right now is a, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna call it yet. I'll have it obviously in the description, but I am really looking forward to Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays. Um, you get to be with your family and I think it, what better time than to glam it up a little bit, show your makeup skills, and just feel pretty. So the look that I've created today is something that I think would be very appropriate for a holiday event with family or friends. It is very glittery, festive, it's very timeless as well. A cat eye is never old, you can wear that to any occasion. Um, and this is what the look looks like. It is very, very soft blending, no harsh cut crease. Um, it's very pointed, but not too bold of a cat eye, and gold glitter, but it's not bam disco ball in your face. Paired with a soft, rosy peach lip. It's coming off kind of weird now that I'm looking at it in the camera, but it's basically just a lighter mauve tone lip. So yeah, if you want to see how I did this look, keep on watching. Okay guys, so we're going to begin with any eye primer that you'd like. I'm going to be using the Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer and just prime both of your eyelids with a light layer. Then I'm going to go in with a medium brown cream eyeshadow. This is Creamy Beige from the Maybelline Color Tattoo Collection. If you have any of the MAC Paint Pots in similar colors, you could use those or any other cream eyeshadows. And you want to apply this on the base of the lid and then blending it up towards the brow bone. You want the color to be all over the entire lid, not just on the main lid area of your eye. You want it to blend out the entire thing so that there are no harsh lines. Then to add a little bit of a baby pink flush to the eye, I'm taking Sincere by MAC. It is one of their blushes. <laughs> I forgot what that was called for a second and I'm using a MAC 286 blending brush just to sweep that into the crease, adding a little bit of pinkness and also a little warmth because it does have some orange undertones to it as well. To blend that out, I'm gonna be using medium dark on the same brush. This is one of MAC's mineralized skin finishes. It's just a warm toned brown that has very slight orange undertones. It's a great transition color as well as being a very universal face powder. I'm then going to highlight the inner corner, brow bone, and blend out any harsh lines using the MAC Banana CC Powder, and again using the same 286 brush to do this. And as you can see, it's adding a little bit of light, a little bit of illumination, but it's not like a stark yellow, so it's a really, really great blending powder, and I love it. It will definitely be in a favorites video if I do one soon. Next, to deepen the crease, I am taking a Pixi Matte Brown Bronzer. This is a deep, cool tone bronzer with very slight, warm undertones. It's more of a cool tone bronzer. And I'm deepening the crease with the same MAC 286 brush. And I got this as a sample in Ipsy, so I'm not sure about the full price or what it actually looks like in full size, but I really, really like this sample. I've nowhere near run out of it. I'm then going to take one of the MAC matte eyeshadows and brown down. I know there were sparkles on it, but that's just because there was glitter on my Z palette. It's not actually a glittery shadow. And I'm just working that into the outer corner of the eye, and then slowly sweeping it across the crease. And I'm using a Sigma... I'm not sure what brush this is, but I will definitely let you guys know. I'm doing the same thing on the other side, deepening the outer corner, and then very slightly bringing that into the crease. I don't want there to be a cut crease, but I do want a little bit of definition in the crease above where we're going to put the glitter at the end. To further the softening of any harsh lines, this is a lot of blending, guys. Um, I'm taking Max Wedge on a crease brush from Royal, no, from Real Techniques. Uh, I don't use this brush often, but it was the only clean one I had on hand, and I didn't really want any other product going into the lid right now. And excuse my voice if I sound a little stuffy, I am sick right now, but I really, really was happy how this book came out when I was playing around with my makeup, so I had to film it for you guys, sick or not, so please excuse the stuffiness. 
and then taking the Beguine matte brown shadow that Bond sent me and a very tiny little precision flat shader brush from Coastal Scents and I'm packing that right over where we put brown down um, but keeping it a little bit lower not bringing it into the crease as much and this guys is the darkest brown shadow in the entire world that I've ever seen so I'm literally tapping my brush into it once and then tapping 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 all the excess off I want as little of this on my brush as possible and I I can't believe the pigmentation of the shadow. I want to really want to try some more of that now. As you can see, with that little amount, it really came, oh my god, I can't talk. With that little amount, it made a huge difference in defining the outer corner. So I'm also going to run that under the lower lash line just to add a little more definition there as well. Oh, and if you guys haven't noticed, look how long my lashes look. They've been getting so long. I know I keep saying this in every single video that my lash serum video will be coming up soon, but it will be. It's just a, an expensive video to make and you'll see why. I'm now taking, again, the Lorac Behind the Scenes primer and I'm putting that all over the lid before I apply my Shani Cosmetics Gold Glitter. If you have a glitter glue that's specifically designated for this, either the Too Faced glitter glue or lit cosmetics glitter whatever it's called then use that otherwise use a primer or a transparent eye base I'm next taking a very dark shimmery shade from Lorac and I'm putting that in the outer corner and blending that onto the lid a little bit just to kind of make a gradient between the gold glitter and then this kind of darker brown glitter because I don't want it to be super stark again very very seamless blended out lines for this look today guys to do my cat eye I'm using the Kat Von D tattoo liner um, I apologize I got out of frame for almost the entire thing of doing this so you really only see the do you really only the do what you only see me do the top line with this um, unfortunately I got really out of frame when I was doing the actual wing so I do apologize for that but I did want to show you how precise and small this brush is. As you can see, I'm making the tiniest line over my lower, oh my god, over my upper lash line. I'm sorry guys, I am just woke up and I'm doing the voiceover, so forgive me. Um, but yeah, you can see that it gives a very precise, very dark and jagged line without bleeding. This is a fabulous, fabulous liner. And then making the wings on both eyes, I wanted it to be perfectly even today, so I'm doing each step individually, like I'm not completing one wing and then doing the other, I'm doing literally step by step on each eye as I go. And now that I have my wings mashed up, I'm going to connect the wing to the line that I made earlier. This one you can kind of see, and I feel bad, I feel like you guys are like teeter teetering on your seat to see and look over what's going on, but I'm sorry. You can kind of tell what I'm doing, I'm just connecting the line, filling it in, and then bringing the line over to the lash line. Now we're just going to curl the lashes using the Shu Uramora S Curler. If you guys have not heard of this curler and want me to do a full review on it, I will. It is the best eyelash curler I've ever used. For those of you who have lashes that grow in weird directions or straight down, it's amazing. So if you want me to do a full review and demo on it, I will definitely do so for you guys. And there you go. See, it gives perfectly curled, beautiful lashes. And I used, of course, my CoverGirl Lash Blast Length Mascara. For foundation today, we're switching it up. It is getting into the winter months here in Connecticut, so I am no longer tan. 50 beige from Chanel is too dark for me. I'll have to get 30 soon, but for the time being, I am using the L'Oreal Magic Lumi. I don't know if it's a Magic Lumi. It's it's in the Lumi Illuminating line. It's one of their illuminating foundations, and I'm not sure of the color. I'll put it in the description. And using MAC Face and Body C6. And I'm using the C6 mainly in the outer portions of my face where I want there to be more bronzeness, but not too much. Like it's not, it's a foundation, it's not a bronzer, so it will just warm up the skin. And then using the L'Oreal mainly in the center of my face where I want it to be a little bit lighter. 
And for both of those foundations today, I'm using the Kabuki brush from Bestope. I'm not using my fingers for once. Um, but yeah, it works better, I find, with that brush. For concealer, of course, I am using the Maybelline Fit Me in the shade Medium. And I'm just going under my eye area to highlight and conceal any under eye circles or fine lines before highlighting my nose and chin. <coughs> I'm also going to highlight my forehead and then under my cheekbone just to add more definition. And you'll see what a big difference it makes after it's all blended out. It kind of just completely sculpts out the cheekbone and you don't really need to contour that much after that. But you know I'm going to. And this here is where the tutorial kind of stops a little bit, guys. I don't know if you if you want to follow what I'm doing now, go ahead, but this was more just an experiment for myself. This was not part of the look. I am contouring with cream products today, and I wanted to use very dark, shadowy shades, so I'm using Toughest Taupe from the Maybelline Color Tattoo line and Creamy Beige mixed together. This kind of makeup is not something that you would do every day if you were going out. This is how um, makeup artists have contoured my skin on set using taupe shades. And it looks beautiful in photography and in sunlight, but not if you're going to be in everyday indoor settings. This is not something you want to do. It's very, very gray. It's very harsh. It doesn't give you much life to the skin. It just gives you very defined features, this technique. And as you can see, it gave beautiful shape to my face. And once you see the end shots where I'm in the sun and everything's all blended out, guys, you'll see it's it's a beautiful technique to use if you feel comfortable doing it or if you're going to be in situations where it's appropriate. Again, don't do this kind of contouring if you are going to be going out every day or unless you are extremely, extremely fair in skin tone. And those of you with very ivory skin tone don't look right with bronzer using by using bronzer to contour because it makes them look very muddy, then you can use taupe shades. But in everyday case, for those of you from medium to dark skin tones, you probably don't want to do that. And here I'm just adding a little color to my cheeks using a cheek stain from Tint and Sass. I just pat that into the cheeks, and no, that's not blood, that's from the cheek stain. Um, and now I'm taking a cream highlighter. This is from Temp2. It's a sample that I got in my Ipsy. It's a rose pearl highlighter that you would put in the air gun that Temp2 sells. And I'm just patting that on the cheekbones. It's really pretty. It's kind of making me want to buy the thing, which <laughs> I don't know if I want to spend that kind of money. But anyway, we're just further contouring the nose using the taupe shade from Makeup Forever and the MAC CC Banana Powder. And I'm just slimming down the nose. And there's my new nose. For the lips, I'm going in with Max Faux. It's one of their cream, I think it's a satin, or I'm, not, I'm actually not very familiar with their lipstick line and the names of things. This is actually my very first MAC lipstick, which I was super excited about. And I'm topping that with Rose Pearl from the, what is it? Oh, Revlon Color Burst line. And I'm putting Bellini, also from the same line, in the very center of my lip followed by, again, the Tem2 Pearl Highlighter for an ombre effect. <laughs> to define my brows, I'm going with the Sigma Brow Powder Duo in the darkest shade, and of course I'm using my Royal Langnickel dual-sided brow brush and spoolie. And I'm just distributing the color first, filling in any sparse areas, not changing the shape at all, and then going in with the spoolie to brush it out and make sure everything's nice and even. And to finish off the look, we're taking MAC Fix Plus, and you'll see guys, this just makes everything so dewy, and it makes the makeup kind of just meld together, and it looks so beautiful afterwards. And here are the finished shots.
So guys, that concludes this look that I created for Thanksgiving. I will also be creating a few more looks for the holidays coming up. If you have any recommendations of what you'd like to see, leave a comment in the bar down below, and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so below so you can stay tuned and get updated on these looks that are coming up. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. -bye.